Hello, everyone. My name is Juan Velasquez. I am a civil service mechanical assembler at Brake Controls. Today, I would like to show you how to perform a seat replacement on the Series 749 gate valve. Relieve line pressure before attempting to remove the valve from the line to avoid personnel injury and or equipment damage. If the valve has a pneumatic actuator, solenoid valve, limit switches, or other accessories, disconnect electrical and pneumatic supply. Relieve the line pressure and close the valve. Flushing the line may be necessary. Remove the valve from the line by loosening the flange mounting bolts, studs, and nuts. Clamp the valve in the vertical position to a fixture. Do not block the valve port when clamping the valve. An overhead hoist may be needed for larger size valves. Disconnect the stem from the gate by removing the clevis, bolts, and nuts. Remove the gland nuts from the valve. Remove the actuator and superstructure from the valve. An overhead hoist may be needed for larger size valves. Remove the gland from the valve. For larger valves, secure the gate with a lifting device to ensure the valve is safely contained before removing the packing. Remove the gland packing from the valve. Remove the gate carefully from the valve body. Clean the gate and smooth out any rough surfaces. Remove the chest liner after removing the gate. Straighten the trailing side of the seat to prevent any damage to the valve body and to make removal of the seal and seat easier. Remove the seal by pulling it out of the top of the valve body. Clean and inspect the body for any damage, particularly sharp edges that may cut the seal. Smooth out if necessary. Saturate the body seal groove area with a good water-soluble lubricant that will not affect the seal or process. Inspect the new seal and saturate both ends of the seal. For ease of installation, bend the wire over to make the leading end easier to push through the valve body. Insert one end of the seal from the top side. Reach into the port area and pull the seal through the groove of the port area. And pull the seal from the top of the body. Ensure the seal is not overstretched. Reinstall the chest liner into the valve body, ensuring the groove in the liner sits around the valve seal and seat. Install the gate and mount the actuator or hand wheel. Reattach the yoke to the valve body and the actuator and stem to move the gate into the closed position.
operate the gate to seat the seal into the bottom groove and cycle several times. After stroking the valve and ensuring the seat sets into the groove, remove the bolts holding the yoke onto the valve body Disconnect the clevis from the gate. Then, remove the yoke and actuator from the valve. An overhead hoist may be needed for larger size valves. To repack the valve, place the rows of packing in one at a time between the gate and the valve body. Ensure they are placed in the appropriate order. Use a tool with a long, blunt edge to push the packing into the chest cavity. Be careful not to cut or damage the packing with the end of the tool. With the seal forced fully into the seal groove, Cut each end of the seal off to the required extended length. Reinstall the packing gland follower and gland bolts. Tighten the gland bolts to compress the packing around the gate. Reinstall the actuator and yoke assembly, including bolting the yoke to the body and the clevis to the gate. Wrap the wire from the end of the seat and seal around the gland bolts for additional support to hold the seat and seal into place. Adjust the packing for tight shutoff when the valve is installed and pressurized to operating pressure. <laughs> 